Audio Jungle. John Lewis, thank you very much for joining me again. Uh, you've become somewhat of a TikTok star, I see. Goodness. <laughs> you are trending I on... I still have to understand TikTok. Okay, we're going to teach you all about TikTok. But John, a chief economist... Um, Not chief economist. I economist. believe you are my chief economist <laughs> because you're out there. You're making a lot of noise. Um, you, you've got a lot to say. And uh, we've got bold investors out there, people on the fence thinking of should they buy, should they be selling. And we have this conversation and try and pick up the pieces, uh, whether we should go right, or should go left. Um, there are opportunities out there right now. Um, why should people invest in property in South Africa right now? Well, I think um, because there's a lot changing. Okay, so so the the economic cycle, the economic super cycle, as I like to talk about, is not. It's not the economy is not setting the world alight at the moment. That's true. Um, What's happened is that if you look at real property values, commercial property values, according to MSCI, in recent years they've corrected when you adjust for inflation by about 25%, all, the all property index. Um, cap rates are on the rise, uh, you know, yields will follow. Uh, it, it becomes a more attractive time to buy an income stream. You're not going to get Massive capital growth. Maybe one day there's a boom time again. Yet it's, that's probably not nearby. But is it uh, something that that people will not sell? So how do you buy an income stream? Um, it's a very difficult. Well, uh, I think there's enough property, to, you know, be, be around being sold. Um, but it, it's about it's about buying into now buying into an income stream. In in the boom times prior to two thousand and eight, you could buy any property you liked just yeah. about anywhere in the country, and you got a few hundred percent capital growth. Immediately, you know that was <laughs> great. That's not the time now. Sure, um, it's about creativity. It's about applying your mind, and because there's a lot of change and uncertainty in the markets, um, the, the the guy who gets it right. With the, the 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 design of the building, the you know the 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 the, 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 the sort of change management, if you could call it that, and I'll give you, I'll explain to you what I'm talking about just now. Um, you know, they, 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 there's there's a lot of opportunity for them. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the change, as in the way we work for one. Right. Right. So we, we're not quite certain how this is all panning out yet. What I think we're getting a clear indication of is that not as many people are going back to the office. Uh, there's a portion that are working more from home. Those that are back at the office are not back five days a week now. It's sort of two or three days a week. So there's a shorter peak period in the office space, right? So what does that mean? It means that office, the, the, the office now has to compete with other things like the home for, you know, for, for tenants and for, for employees, okay? And the, the, this, this requires a lot of creativity. Uh, the there's talk there, there's a whole lot you you look all over the world it's like how do we replan office space it's got to be collaborative people come back to the office because they want to see people they want to you know it's it, it's not just about putting in as many desks as what you can anymore yeah. um, so so you, you, you it's kind of hot spotting and uh, the redesign yeah. the guys that get that right are going to really do well um, also but also to make sure that the office environment is almost a home now so that 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 Google environment where you've got bean bags and where you've got pause yes. areas yeah. and entertainment and yes. uh, yeah. all those and you that's where the creativity comes in, right? Exactly. To actually yeah. get people to want to come back. Yeah. So so the the the, the, the investors that and the, the landlords that get that right, that get that design right. Next. And then of course there's private space that's needed. These open plan offices in my view are totally outdated. Yeah. Uh, now we've got to try and sit at our office and do Zoom meetings in, in an open desk with people all around us. I don't think that's appropriate. So the so configuration so, You've got to have more collaborative space yeah. and more private space, mm -hmm. more soundproof space, um, telephone booths type of thing. So so there's a huge amount of change. And, and in, in times of change and more uncertainty, the, 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 the creative thinking and the, you know, the innovative thinking comes to the fore and the guys who get that right, they win the game. But I mean, it's also about productivity and uh, corporate South African business owners want to ensure um, that, uh, that they have teams of people in one environment to perform. There's no doubt that in certain industries, you're going to get more productivity with people coming to work than people at home. 
Well, a certain portion of the time. But I think where it's settling now is that we're not getting the people back to the offices as much as what uh, what they um, were. Yeah, yeah. But now, you know, I'm reading uh, in the New York Times about how New York's starting to evolve. <clears throat> and um, so off- office, the office market's becoming more decentralized. And residential, high-density residential developments, if you could call uh, they call that, them that, are, are starting to create communal office space in their complex or their, in their building, okay? Right. Right. And so you will not, you, many people, it's disruptive to be working in their home. They're not going to commute 50 Ks to an office necessarily. Um, they're going to walk downstairs in their residential building and there's office space there which they share or they book or they, you know, whatever the case may be. So so there's all sorts of changes coming in the property market and therein lies the opportunity. So residential developers are not just going to be putting in the common amenity of the swimming pool and the gym anymore. It's going to be the, the another amenity is going to be communal workspace, meeting space, right. uh, Wi-Fi, and all the all the rest. So, so, so there's <laughs> competition between between two sects or two sects uh, between corporate and between residential, and for those developers, yes, there will be um, competition. Yeah, the, and, the and developers will want to the home developers will resident will want to keep people at home, and the corporate will need to redesign to bring people from home. So there's a platform of competition there yes, coming, right? Yeah. Um, you know, but, but but often often the market goes through a fairly not stagnant period, not only in terms of how it's performing overall, but it goes through periods of fair, fair, fair certainty where we all sort of knew what tenants wanted from us as an office landlord is just to pile as many desks in as what you could as far as the eye can see, open plan. We're not worried about productivity and, you know, the one landlord will be doing it and 20 others will be doing it too. Uh, and and the product is not dis- differentiated necessarily that much. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a stable sort of that's what everybody's looking for. Now we've got to play a time of change and change brings about the opportunity for the ones who do it right because... A lot of buildings are outdated. A lot of office buildings have to be repurposed into residential. Sure. A lot of sure. lot of office buildings have to be reconfigured and redesigned totally because they're out of date for modern after COVID work. Um, and then, of course, residential developments too. It's like we need more of this and that. You know, we need more office space and so on. So they, they're evolving too. And during that time of big change, which I think is on us now, um, that's that creates opportunity. I mean, companies like WeWorks uh, that had a bit of a stumble in the road uh, will surely, through this process, begin to evolve again. I think so. I, th- I think that um, because that that principle. Now, this is another thing I've mentioned earlier in this conversation: is that the peak working week for a lot of us corporates are, is uh, the, the peak. Sorry, office attendance yes, yes. period of, is is shorter. Um, in days that gone by, there was a five-day peak uh, attendance rate right. in the office, and then there was only the two Saturday and Sunday of the seven days where you know you had this downtime and you know you, it's wasted. Office space right. is wasted. Now you've moved to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is downtime really, and you know Tuesday to Thursday if you're lucky. You know even Thursday is getting a bit thin. <laughs> so now the question is, can you redesign these buildings and the security and the you know to rejig it so that you can have some other tenant using the building during that off period? I think that's what's going to come now during that big, very long downtime. So like that shared space, that uh, shared environment, Uber, yeah. Uber office yeah. space. That's what's coming, yeah. right? So, so, so the one, the one is where you, you know, you just all share, you know, during peak times, you know, you have this WeWork type setup where you all just uh, share, book your meeting rooms and so on, come in and go, go. But it's also, you know, for even for companies that perhaps own their office space, it's like, well, what do we do with this four-day downtime? Because that's a bit long, you know. Can we can we lease it to I don't know some adult education institution or something like that, doing part-time education? I'm just guessing, I, but 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 you know, I'm, it's conspicuous. You know, I've. I've so Second. collaboration, collaboration yeah. is going to be part of the creativity. <clears throat> yes. So yeah. how to collaborate? Um, but then it begs another question. 
Because and I often in the marketing game come across this where the brands remain autonomous and no one is to interfere with the brand. And I'm of the opinion, obviously, that collaboration and ingenuity uh, shouldn't affect the brand uh, in any particular way if you've got your messaging right. Well, how do we deal with that? I mean, if we have a brand, if we have a, a business and we're kind of outsourcing elements uh, to, to other organizations, how, how would that kind of fit within the brand scope of creativity? Well, uh, I mean, we've been outsourcing a lot for many, many years. Sure. You know, no tele accommodation. Many, <laughs> many brands. You know, if you're talking about owning their office space, for instance, I mean, many brands don't even own much of their office space as it is. You know, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of us big corporates lease space from all sorts of people. Um, you know, I think more and more the brand is driven out to the public online. It's uh, virtual. It's, you know, it, it, it's not necessarily having owning your own building anymore and having, you know, the highest building in the CBD and having your, your branding on top of it anymore. So, I mean, the, the word creativity is such a powerful word and innovation is such a powerful word and, and kind of that needs to be lined up. Uh, and once you line that up and you know what you want and you've got your messaging out, then property surely is a good buy in South Africa right yeah, now I mean, because I, the it, value is there, yeah. surely. I mean, I think it's increasingly there. I, yeah. I, you know, it's, um, it's, it's maybe not the quite the bottom of the cycle yet and you know it's difficult to tell but but when, with interest rates rising with inflation you know the the, the, the better buy time is the weaker economic time and the sure. higher interest rate time that's the that's that part of the cycle where it becomes a better buying time um, and interest rates are climbing yeah. and then you've got these structural changes which has created a big oversupply in the office market for instance so values have been dropping there so um, so that's, a, that's not linked to the, the, the normal economic cycle, that's linked to a structural change, which right. begs the question, well, what do we do with this stuff now? And, and, and you see people, you know, you see developers um, repurposing a lot to residential. So, you know, already that's, you know, the, the change is in, in, is, is in play. Um, but, you know, I think they can probably, that, that there's, there's more creativity to, to be um, to seen here, to, to, to come through here. But I think that's, that's always the important part with, with always the thing with property to emphasize. And, you know, maybe I'm not the creative guy, but, but you know, what I, what I have seen is, you know, property is not just about you buy a property and it's just going to make you money because, the, because of the it. property cycle. Um, you know, it's your, your set of skills as well, how you design a regional shopping center, the, uh, how you design your, your your office space, how you design your your golf estate, whatever it might sure, be. That's sure. that's three quarters of the performance in the thing. And when there's big change and uncertainty in certain markets because of a structural change, like the work from home surge, uh, you know that that gives a big opportunity to those with that creative mind to reinvent the office space. Office is not going to die. Um, a certain it's going to be a smaller market. But, but also the execution to get content out is also going to shift and change. So um, corporates may require less space, more productivity and less space. Sure. That's, that, where, that's, that's another element attached to that's it. That's where it's going, yes. Okay. So, uh, so in your yeah. travels, I mean, you, you've, you've been around town. Have you noticed anything just off the cuff that's kind of blown you away that you've said, wow, you know, there's great creativity there. That's an example of creativity in uh, in property or in in acquisition and things that have kind of evolved. Have you seen anything that you can uh, kind of pinpoint and say that's interesting? I, I, well, not so, some some of it perhaps around the towns here. Some of it uh, perhaps what I've read from overseas. You know, um, I think I've probably mentioned quite a bit of it now, and some some of it that's still lacking. You know. Yeah. Uh, as I, you know, now now I happen to be in an off. Well, I, I, I work a significant portion yeah. from home. I go to the, the head office that I'm in, and I go to other head offices too. Right. And and there I still see I see change coming. Uh, I see the 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 improvements and the collaborative spaces, but I don't think we've even nearly there yet. And one thing I emphasize, for instance, is that I think that we're all talking about open collaborative spaces in office, but we haven't f figured out about private space yet. Yes, uh, yes, that's, yes. that's still got to come on a far greater scale. So, um, and then in residential developments, you, you, you know, we've seen for, for years how, uh, for some years, how 
residential developments are increasingly putting in more and more amenities. It's yes, more yes. more sort of lock up and go and, you know, the communal swimming pool yeah. and clubhouse areas and so on. That's what people want. The work the workspace still isn't there yet, but more of that is coming in right. the meeting rooms as well. So you live in a residential place. You don't necessarily have to go back to the old um, uh, study that we used to all have in our own residential property. Well, I didn't have it, but back in the 70s, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of houses got built like that. But, you know, this uh, this communal sort of space and amenities and clubhouses and even entertainment sometimes sure. is starting to evolve in, you know, so it's almost creating a sense of community. So, so we've seen a lot of, you, you know, you see a lot of that in work in progress at the moment, yeah, yeah. more of it probably to come. A safe, secure environment where you can almost live as a community now, so we're not just yeah. plonking down houses anymore as far as the eye can see. Um, yeah, one, one sees signs. So the future, the future property developer or the future property investor is really potentially a trendsetter because this is new ter- territory. Yes. I mean, so yeah. we, when we talk about creativity in property, I mean, I know for what we're selling, I mean, we're, we, we're selling some remarkable assets. I mean, and if anybody was to jump on the ladder and that could jump on the ladder, all that's missing is the creative spin attached to... Yeah. yeah. And I'm also noticing that that many corporates are selling their non-core assets because they want to focus on what they are sure. focused on doing. Yes. And so yeah. five, six, years, seven years ago, they bought certain assets to for the future. But they, they just don't want to hold on to that anymore because they just want to focus on what they currently are doing. And that surely is an opportunity as well. And, and also, remote areas are becoming coming very busy and um, very um, um, focused on right now because of just the volume of people. So sure. th- these are all great opportunities out there, right? And and they've just been reset. The pricing has, to a large degree, come down. And so anybody that has a creative eye and thought process, this could be yeah. a wonderful opportunity sure. to jump sure. on the wagon. Yeah. Um, and and to look, you know, to keep your ear on the ground. I mean, the, the you know the great property investors that I've met, uh, you know, they, they're always they've always got the ear on the ground, uh, you know, for changes in trends. It's you know, I mean, we've we've talked about semigration. Yes. And yes. you know, I mean, the Western Cape has been the it's most exploding. You know, obvious and down to the Southern Cape and up the West Coast. But it's not just that simple. Uh, you know, it's it, it, it can be more middle to higher income people that live out in Limpopo, for instance, you know, because they don't have to be in or in Potch of Sturm. I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just sort of throwing up, sure. you know, examples. But, you know, it's important to keep your ear, ear to the ground and, you know, keep keep looking for, well, how are people wanting to live? I mean, we've we we know that there's been a work from home surge. Look, right. a lot of people have come back to the office after they were forced to work, after the, the, the forced lockdowns were finished. Things have normalized to a degree, but it's not what it was. Right, so so now those people who work remotely more, what are they doing? Now there's, there is a semigration trend to the Western Cape, which has been identified, and to the KZN coast, certain right. parts there. That, that Those are the big ones. But the people around Joburg, what are they doing? Do they, still want to live as near to the office anymore or is further away out in some more spacious environment more their scene you know that's uh, how, how are they living how they're planning to live how they're going to live it's not all done yet you know um, technology will carry on improving people will carry on being more mobile and less um, you know sort of dependent or, 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 or bound to the office Right. Uh, for one, then there's online retail, you know. I mean, John, if I had to say to you that I believe there will be a surge. Now, I can't tell you when the surge is coming, mm-hmm. but it, it obviously takes a trendsetter. And then when that trend takes off, when that trend takes off, people kind of follow. But it's almost like music, isn't it? Where, sure. you know, the song is written, it becomes a great, great hit, maybe a classic. You never know. Yeah. But But the song the song choices change and our catalogs change. But sure. there is no doubt that um, people want to be comfortable. Uh, the millennials today uh, want to work, but they don't want to work as intensely as maybe the older generation where they had structure and it was nine to five. And I'll, it was I'll let intense. you say that they don't want to work. Like <laughs> no, they, want to work <laughs> they want to work differently. They want to work differently. They yeah. have different requirements. And I always sound the oldest millennial in the room, but... Um, 
people have different needs. They have different requirements. That's what we're talking about. Sure. And I think it's mm. it's challenging for investors to understand because oh, things change, yeah. fashions change, yeah. and it's always difficult to be in fashion. Again, that's what we all strive to be in whatever we do. Um, but there's no doubt about it that um, corporate South Africa want energy in their business. Energy sure. drives mm. um, drives activity and opportunity, and I'm finding yeah. that all the time. And when you work from home, kind of they want to get you back. Um, and, and then they beg the question, you know, we're paying for all the space. How are we going to re-engineer it? And I mean, that's what we're talking about right Don't now. Don't pay for so much space. <laughs> yeah, so there's always this conundrum yeah. of reducing space sure. and then increasing something yeah. else. And uh, that's kind of the challenge. But um, so, I mean, it's great chatting to you because I always get an a inner perspective when I when I talk to you and you've always got, uh, you, you are making a lot of noise out there and positive noise. I mean, you're out on LinkedIn, you're, you're you, you now become uh, a TikTok trender with your... <laughs> and I'm very happy about that. You have to explain to me what TikTok is. Uh, well, I mean, I think, you know, we, we, we're moving towards the, the world of visualization and messaging. And the difference is that um, what, what we took 10, minute to, 10 minutes to say, we've got to say in less than 20 seconds today. And I think that's where everything is, right? Sure. And so, um, but, but it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you again. Are we going to talk again? Uh, in the near future, and um, I am uh, I'm enthusiastic about this property market. I'm enthusiastic about South Africa, and um, I still think it's it's a great place to live and enjoy. You can have a wonderful life, right? And uh, possibilities are endless. Change equals opportunity. Absolutely, and knowledge breeds confidence, and confidence breeds enthusiasm. So that's my time with John Luce, economist. I call you chief economist, but <laughs> he is an economist of great, great, great insight into markets and opportunities, and especially from an investment and where the future is going in South Africa. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure, Craig. Okay.